That means it's time now for Judith Thompson, without the P, the librarian who's in the studio's popped down from the library. And here's a jingle. Shh. We're going into the Feel Good Mansion House Library with world-renowned author Judith, the librarian, Thompson. Hey, I tell you what, you know I have some strange people making these jingles, believe you me. Good morning, Judith. <laughs> Good morning, Esther. Are you all right? <laughs> yes, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, are, are my hardbacks getting dusted down? They are get yeah. <laughs> Your hardbacks are looking just fine. Yes. Do you like my hardbacks? I've got a good collection. You certainly have. Hmm. I'm going to hand you the <laughs> microphone, Judith Thompson. Here she <laughs> is, the librarian. Moving swiftly on here. Yes. Um. I consider that one of my duties here as librarian is to introduce some fresh books to your feel good library, Lester. So I'm going to talk today about a brand new release that was launched only this month. It's called, intriguingly, Sour Milk in Sheep's Wool. Sour Milk in Sheep's Wool is a novel about women in southern Sweden in the late 19th and early 20th century. The author, Helen Irwin, is Swedish, and although she has lived in New York for 30 years, she retains strong ties with her native land and an active interest in its history. There are two main characters in her book, but with completely different life experiences, and one of the women, Annette, is based on the author's great-grandmother and her life. When she was a child in Sweden, Helen was told that her great-grandmother lived in a castle not far from them. She went to visit it and found it to be a beautiful fairy tale place, and she began to imagine that perhaps she might have aristocratic relatives. When years later she started doing genealogy research, however, she learned that nobility was about as far from the truth as you could come. Annette was, in fact, a milkmaid and an unwed mother. She didn't live in the castle at all, but on the farm owned by the castle. And the reason for that was that smaller farms would never hire an unwed mother back then because it would bring shame on the owner by association. <laughs> Wealthy landowners who lived in castles had such large workforces that an unwed milkmaid would go by unnoticed, at least by the owners who would never associate with the milkmaids. Helen says that no one in her family had ever spoken about all this, either from ignorance or embarrassment. She has tried to tell Annette's story the way she thinks she would have wanted it told, because, as she says, it is easy for us to sit in judgment, but often things happen that people have no control over, and that may steer a person into a direction they never planned. Her other main character is Hannah, who is a businesswoman. She opens her own cafe and hires a male baker. And it is a bit of a big deal in the Sweden of those days that she, a woman, is the employer. Hannah is also an active women's rights activist, and she and her friends meet regularly to discuss women's issues. There were temperance groups there, too who encouraged people not to drink. Women supported this movement because they believed that women would have more say in their marriages if their men were sober. Hannah's Cafe becomes the meeting point for her and her activist friends, and soon they become one of Sweden's suffrage chapters with her activism gearing more and more towards women's right to vote. I've set the scene for you, but I'll not tell you any more about the plot, other than to say that Elise Ottersen Jensen is one of the major Swedish historical figures who is featured in Helen's novel. And I love the way Helen has managed through her meticulous research to actually tie in one of her own ancestors into a real story. It is not the first book that Helen Irwin has written. She previously published James Journey, which is a novel dealing with the issue of slavery in 19th century America, and a charming children's book, Helga the Hedgehog Meets the New Neighbours, which she has illustrated herself, and which encourages children to accept people who are not necessarily just like them, when visitors from another planet move in next door. All in all, I believe she's an author whose work should be taken seriously, and I hope to see more of her books published in the future. If you would like to find out more about her, then I suggest you visit her website, which is helenerwin.com. I guess, Lester, there's not much chance of my work as an author being taken very seriously now that I've become a regular part of your show, though. Mm, yeah, quite right. I'm not too sure if I prefer you in a hardback or, uh, or a soft, uh, softer cover, Judith. 
Well, are you, are, you, avail- are you available in hardback? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but not. <laughs> Pardon? <clears throat> Excuse me, you made me I'm laugh. I'm um, I'm throwing you off. <laughs> Are you available available in hardback? Hang on, hang on. I'm available in all formats. Let me say that. Oh, I'm glad (laughs) to know that. You know, you've just gone up in my esteem. Anyway, and you say things so nicely, don't you? Now, Judith Thompson, you know I'm going to be doing these things, 10 things we can't live without. What can't you live without, Judith Thompson? I thought, I heard you say that, and Mm. I was just having Marmite on toast at the time, and I thought Marmite. You can't live without Marmite. No, let Marmite. Me just, I love let me Marmite. just check down my top ten. Uh, it's not even in the top hundred, Judith Thompson. So I'm unusual. <laughs> you certainly <laughs> there are. Is, there are some times when only Marmite hits the spot. If you can <laughs> make anything out of that, but you know, I possibly just... could, but you don't want me to. Yeah, you possibly could, but you I don't want I, me I, to. No, I certainly you didn't. No, no, no. What's your dog's name, Judith Thompson? Lucky. Lucky, yes. Everybody in the librarian has got a dog called Lucky. Lucky it is, yes. It's got its own bed in your front room, hasn't it? Yes, you've seen it. Yes, he's, yeah. he's a lovely rescue greyhound. And he's got, yes, he's got. He's in my study, actually. He took over the settee and that is now, well, I'm really in his room now. But yeah, well, look, when, when you vacate these premises, I don't want any dog hairs left in there, all right? Because I'm going to have to get <laughs> Maid Marion to go around with, with the vacuum, all right? And Billy Butler <laughs> doesn't like dog hairs, all right? <laughs> he doesn't. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see you on the show <laughs> tomorrow, shall we, Judith?